Again, welcome, welcome everybody. Those who are listening on Facebook, God bless your heart. We don't see you, but Jesus sees you. Amen. So be beware, know that God is looking down on you. And guess what? God is looking down on all of us. And right now, God is, sm is smiling on us. You know why? Because God loves us. And God is exciting, is excited, pardon me, whenever people come together to study his word. Isn't that beautiful to know that there is a God, we serve a God who smiles on us? Well, that's the God of the Bible. As we turn to him and give ourselves fully to him, he smiles on us and he blesses us. Listen, folks, I have some good news for you. I've been promising you that after you, you, you participate in 10 meetings with us, you will have a gift. We have a gift for you, but we have only one problem. How do we send you this gift? I have a best book that is called Steps to Christ. In fact, our brother Adam, for those who were there with us on Sunday, had promoted this had promoted some books, and one of the books that he's promoting is one is my best book. The first best book in, in life for me is the Bible. Amen. But the second one is a very small one. In fact, you're going to like it because it's not big. Very small one. Everybody can read it. Very simple English. Please don't miss that. I want to send this book into your mail. So if I can get your mail address, I'll appreciate that. For me to get your mail address, you will have to email me. If you check on the screen or on the chat, there is a place where you will see the phone number. In fact, it's on that, if it's on that flyer, if you had received the flyer, right in front or right behind, pardon me, you will see a number and also an email address. Please send us, send me personally, privately, on that email address. Now, if you want to call, call that number and there will be a nice, lovely lady who will take your call and please give to her your address and we would love to send you that book. It is very important. Many people are religious, but they're not Christians yet. They do lots of activities in the church, but their hearts are not converted yet. They're not born again. That little book will help you find Jesus and be born again, and be spirit-filled. So you want to read that book as soon as possible. If you can, therefore, give me your email address or phone number. We will get your address and send that book to you. By the way, if you want to ask me private questions or you want to call me, please, Lorna, put my phone number on the chat and you can call me and we will try to find ways. I will find ways to contact you to answer your questions. Is that okay? I hope so. Let me go on the screen right now and let me put uh, the PowerPoints on. There we go. In 2005, pardon me, 2004, October, I moved to New Caledonia to work there as a minister of the gospel. But then in 2007, I was holding a meeting in a large auditorium, not too large, it could hold 500 people, and, and it was full. It was at that time people were giving their hearts to Jesus in New Caledonia. A man came to me and said, Pastor John, we need this message to be preached on our islands. We've never heard, I've never heard anything like that, and we've never heard anything like that. I said, which island is it, my brother? He said, it's Wallace Island. I said, Wallace? He says, yes. I said, you know, we've been trying as a, a lot to enter Wallace for 40 years, but we've been stopped by a church there. They've been blocking the way for 40 years. Well, probably you have an idea of which church I'm talking about. Unfortunately, it falls on the Roman church. Wallace is 99% uh, Catholicism there. Of course, they would prefer to have only their church there. So they've blocked us for 40 years. And now this man is saying, listen, please come and bring. I said, we've tried. He said, I will help you. I said, who are you? He said, don't worry, pay my ticket. Bring me there and you will see. In my heart, I say, this guy wants to get a ticket to go to his island. That's all. But no, he was right. When we got there, he brought us there to the king and all these things. The king, he was the nephew of the king, you see. So we've done all the things 
through him. And finally, we were able to establish ourselves there. And I brought my family. And for nine, nine months, we were there um, preaching the gospel. Let me tell you, folks, it was not easy. Of course, when the church realized that we were there, it was too late because we had done all the customary practices and everything, and we were there. I mean, I was preaching night after night. It's, it's a small island, about 15,000 people. And, and, uh, with Futuna, it's 15,000. So it's, with Wallace itself, it's about 9,000. <laughs> we were having over 130 people coming night after night to listen to the word of God. It was mind-blowing. But when the church heard what was going on, literally the leaders of the churches of the church started to knock at the doors of these people and say, if you continue to go there, you will lose your job and you will lose your family. Are you listening? Well, folks, this is what happened really. And there was a point that one, the son of the king literally threatened me with a gun. And he says, if you pass by my, before my house, I'll shoot you down. So we were started to be persecuted because of this book called the Bible. But thank God I knew it already because the apostles had been persecuted before. Jesus says, the, the servants is, are not greater than the master. They've persecuted me, they will persecute you. So, so we prepared ourselves, we prayed. And so people started to lose their jobs and the group started to go down until 30 people. The disciples, are you listening there? We, talk, we spoke about that. Many people are following God, but only a few are disciples. These are those who are sincere with God. And they follow God no matter what. Even though persecution comes because of the word, they still stick to Jesus. These are disciples. You are disciples tonight. Can we say amen? And I pray that you will stick to God even though you're persecuted, even though people will laugh at you. May you stick to God and you obey the word of God. Can we say amen? As I was preaching, my dear friends, there was a, a, a girl who came to the meeting. There she is. Fia is her name. Fia was so touched by the word. But I need to tell you, Fia was not a Christian. She used to go to the church, of course, the Roman church every Sunday. But guess what? Her heart was far from God. She'd done all sorts of crazy stuff. She was an alcoholic from the age of 19. She was doing all those crazy stuff. In fact, two times she's, she, was, she was crashed in a car. She was driving because of alcohol. The, the car, the two cars were good for nothing except her. She came out alive all, both times. God was trying to protect her. Now, the, the, the grandmother who was coming to my meetings had invited her and said, listen, Fia, you must come to listen to the word of God. You cannot continue like that. You will lose your life sooner or later. Fia came. Fia was touched by the word. I made an appeal to give your life to Jesus. And Fia, literally, that's her in white right there. That day when I called for baptism, by the way, you will see what baptism is right now. Fia raised her hands. Literally, she went on her knees, like you can see there, the third picture on your right. And she raised her hands. I've never seen that before. I, normally, when I appeal, I make an appeal. People come in front and they quietly wait. But she went on her knees and she started to cry and lifted up her hands and said, Jesus, I'm tired with life. I've attempted suicide before, but now I give my life to you because life makes sense with you. Without you, life doesn't make sense. In fact, we baptized. There were six of them on that day who decided to get baptized. And there they are. You can see that. All ladies, can you see that? And I'm in the middle there. And the others are the two men on the, the right. There are two ministers, lovely men. And they helped me with the baptism. Now listen to that. After Fia got baptized, guess what? She lost her job. She was a journalist in Wallace, both on TV and radio station. In fact, it was on the radio station pardon me, on the radio station. And she lost her job. And guess what? Who was the manager of the radio station and TV station? It was her parents. Literally, the parents kicked her out of her job. They were mad that Fia gave her life to Jesus and got baptized. Not only did she lose her job, but they kicked her out of the home. They 
disinherited her, inverted commas. We took Fia. So often she came and slept at home and at her grandmother's home who was coming to our church to listen to the word of God. So Fia was like our little sister. She slept at our homes and it was beautiful to see how God was working in Fia. So often she cried. She, she missed her mother and father. They were all against her. She lost her job, but she had another family. God gave her a new family, God's family. But this is the point. I told Fia, listen, Fia, what is happening to you is normal. The Bible talks about it. The moment you give your life to Jesus, those who don't have Jesus and the truth, they will fight against you. And that's why your, your parents are doing that. They don't know what they're doing. Exactly like what happened on the cross when Jesus was dying. What did Jesus say? Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Why? We saw that. All of us, by nature, we have what? A veil within our hearts. By nature, we're blind until we are born again. Can we say amen? And now we see God when we're born again. Now we understand the truth. Now we follow Jesus. Now we love those who follow Jesus. And we love everybody, even those who do not follow Jesus. Can we say amen? So I told Fia, listen, let's pray for the parents. We started to pray. Then God blessed Fia. She got a ticket to go to France. She went to study to become a nurse. When she was studying to become a nurse, she got a call from her parents. The parents told, them, told her that they are in Numea, in New Caledonia, because the father of Fia was very sick. And so, guess what? Fia heard that her parents were in Numea for treatment, and guess who was in Numea? Uh, in, uh, 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 who was in Numea too? That was in 2015 now. When Fia gave her heart to Jesus, it was 2008. So a couple of years down the road, Fia's parents got sick, the father. In 2015, when they were in Numea, I too was in Numea. I was already working here. I was already in, in New Zealand, but I was doing a series like I'm doing right now with you in Numea. Guess what happened? Well, my dear friends, Fia heard that I was in Numea. Literally, she left her work, her studies, pardon me, left, left the university, left the nursing for a few weeks, came to Numea and said to mom and dad, mom and dad, please, I know you don't like me. You don't like Pastor Jean well. In fact, they hated me like crazy because I brought the daughter to Jesus and to the truth. They said to them, mom and dad, please, please, please forgive me, but at least once in your life, listen to the word. If you don't like this guy and his word, please leave. Don't, don't come again. But I've taken my plane. I paid a big, big ticket just to invite you for one night to come. Please. And then dad and mom was vexed, didn't like it. But then she turned to the father and she said, dad, you know what? You don't have much choice. You're very sick. Maybe God can turn you around and heal you if you come. They decided, to, they decided to come. And guess what happened? The first night they came, they were blown away. Second night, the same thing. Third night, they started to cry. The second, they went, they came for every single night. And guess what? I baptized both the mother and the father of Fia and also the brother of Fia. Can we say, man, these are there. There they are right there in the watery, in the water, baptismal water. Can we say, man? Wow, there they are here. Today, if you want to know what they're doing, in fact, the mother is sharing of how she had mistreated the daughter, Fia, who's in purple color. And they all reconciled right there. They gave their life to Jesus. Can we say amen? There's goosebumps all over me. Fia's enemies became her best friend, her very own mother and father were reconciled to her through the baptismal water. Today, Fia is a new girl in Christ. She's been all over the places, even with me in Mexico, in the States, to share her story of what Jesus has done in her life and also in her mother's life. Fia had tried to attempt suicide a few times, but today she's given her life to serve people. She's been everywhere, not everywhere, of course, in Europe, in many places to share what God has done for her. 
Wow. My dear friends, today I will talk about biblical baptism. For baptism is a symbol of a life transformed by God's grace. Can we say amen? It marks the beginning of a new life in Christ. Let me talk and let me share with you this most important topic. How to bury your past sinful life. How to bury your past sinful life. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this time you've given to us to come together. Bless us. Bless those people who've left, who have left their TV, their food, everything just to come to listen to your word. And I feel indebted to them, God. Because they need to hear not a man. They need to hear God speak to them. So often it has been man speaking. Nothing has happened. So please, God, do a miracle. Please do a miracle right now and speak to our hearts and tell us what baptism is all about. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the most powerful examples of the dramatic changes Christ can make in a life is the story of Saul. Saul, who later became Paul. Have you ever heard of this man? Well, let's talk about Saul, who later became Paul. The Bible says that Paul was a Roman citizen by birth. And he was educated by the very best teachers in Jerusalem. Oh, my dear friends, this man was zealous for his Jewish religion, which at that time was God's true faith on earth. A very strong, Saul was a very strong leader and defender of his religion, Judaism, the Hebrew faith. In fact, after his conversion, he explained what he used to do to put an end to the new faith community, the Christians. For Saul used to persecute the Christians. In fact, he said, I persecuted to death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. And when, one day when he went to, to Damascus to bring in chains even those who were, there to, who were there to Jerusalem to be punished. Wow. Saul were persecu was persecuting the Christians not because he was a bad man, but because he thought that what he was doing was right. He was defending the Hebrew faith, which was the true faith in the Old Testament. Are you there? But Christ had come and had established the Christian faith as the real faith because the Jewish people had failed to accomplish what God wanted them to accomplish to be the light of the world. And so finally, Saul will meet God for the first time. The Bible says that one day while he was on his way to Damascus, a bright light shone out of heaven and struck him to the ground. In fact, it was bringing the Christians to be persecuted in Damascus. That bright light uh, struck him onto the ground and he heard a voice from heaven saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Let me say two things here before we continue, folks. First of all, for those who are facing difficulties in your walk with God right now, some have spoken to me and shared with me, things are not going on too well with them. Let me tell you something. For those who are being persecuted because you are following Jesus or you want to do what God tells you to do, remember that you are not alone in this thing. Can we say amen? Jesus is with you and he's suffering with you. You remember that? We studied that. Wow. Compassio means God suffers with those 
who suffer. And here Jesus says to Saul, I am Jesus of Nazareth whom you are persecuting. Whoa! Each time when you are persecuted, these people are persecuting not you, but Christ himself. Can we say amen? Wow. The problem is really not with you, but with Jesus. Why do they do that? Because they're spiritually blind and they do not know what they're doing. And that's why when sometimes people are rough and tough with us, love them still. Can we say amen? Forgive them. Why? Because we have the mind of Jesus. Because Christ is in me, I see further. And I know why they're doing this to me. It's because there's a veil in their hearts. They don't see Jesus and they don't know the truth. Like Fia, my dear friends, did. Keep loving them anyhow. And God one day will open their eyes. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Second thing, those who are persecuting others, if, if you've been persecuting some Christians, folks, please don't forget, you are doing the enemy's job. You could be a husband or a wife, or parents or a teacher, or like Paul, a church leader, or anybody. If you continue to persecute those who are trying to follow the Bible, one day you will have to face God in judgment. Can we say amen? Yes. What you need is the Damascus experience. You need to have your spiritual eyes wide open, just like it is happening to Saul. So Saul, my dear friends, is struck to the heart. And he realizes that all these times he's been defending Judaism, he's been defending the wrong faith. Now he understands that he's been attacking the real God. And so he said, what shall I do, Lord? He speaks to Jesus directly. And the Lord said, arise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all things which are appointed for you to do. And as a result, my dear friends, of his encounter with Jesus, you see, Saul is encountering Christ there. This is the greatest need of every single Christian. Many people are going to church, but they're serving an unknown God. They've never met Jesus. They've never spoken to Christ. They've never given their lives to Jesus. They've never obeyed God. Who are you tonight? Are you a Christian that is born again, who has met Jesus and has given his life to Christ? Or are you somebody who's blind still and you're serving an unknown God? Christianity is about a group of people who has been set free deep in their hearts and they see their gods by faith and they fall in love with Jesus and they give their lives to God and they say, God, I want to follow you no matter if those Saul will persecute me. Can we say amen? So as a result of his encounter with Jesus, the Bible says that Saul was blind for three days. Can you imagine? And guess what? During these three days, he was able to reflect upon all the pain and suffering that he had inflicted on God's people. Are you listening? And he felt really so bad about his sins and he confessed all of his sins. He then accepted the new faith, Christianity, the pure Christianity based not on tradition, but on the word of God, can we say amen? He accepted Jesus as the son of God, as his personal savior. He was born again. For during three days, Saul went under a total heart conversion. Can we say amen? Then God sent a prophet to him by the name of Ananias. And listen to what Ananias said to Saul. Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that same hour, I looked up at him. Can we say amen? Then he said, the God, then the prophet said to him, the God of our fathers has chosen you that you should know his will and see the just one and hear his voice or the, to, to hear the voice of his mouth for you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. Can we say amen? Did you hear that? For that's what happens when you become a true follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ. You become a witness for Jesus. You no longer become a spectator and you let the pastor do everything. 
And you just warm the benches or the pews when you go to church every weekend. No, the moment the Spirit of God captivates your heart, when Jesus becomes alive in you, you become alive in Christ and you want to share your faith. And that is why I want to thank God for all of you who have tried to invite people night after night. Let me tell you, we have a couple more sermons that people need to hear. And I challenge you to be Paul tonight. Because God has chosen you, same as he has chosen Saul, to bring the gospel everywhere. Are you sharing your faith to others? Mm, so that's what God says to, to Saul, who now becomes Paul. God speaks to the prophet and says, I have chosen you to be my witness to all men. So friends, God told Saul, that he has chosen him in order to go and preach the gospel everywhere. To become his ambassador. Amen. But dear friends, the point is this. In order for Saul, are you listening? In order for Saul to go forward in doing God's will. In order for him to close the bad chapters of his past life. Are you listening? And become a powerful witness for Jesus. Listen to what the prophet Ananias told him to do. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Do you see that? Calling on the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear friends, baptism is the way Saul was to be joined to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? To be joined with Jesus forever. Baptism is the doorway to a new life in Christ. For Paul, for Saul the persecutor, needed to be washed from the terrible things that he had done in the name of his religion. He needed forgiveness of all his past sins. And baptism is what forgiveness and cleansing are all about. Can we say amen? For when Saul was baptized, he knew that God had forgiven him. Can we say amen? And the Bible says that as a result of his baptism, Saul the persecutor became Paul the ambassador. Can we say amen? Turn to that person next to you. Even your child, say amen. Hallelujah. In fact, in fact, it is the same Saul who became Paul. He is the one who wrote 13 books in the Bible, especially in the New Testament. Can you believe that? This persecutor, God will use him to become his ambassador and author of parts of the Bible. Can we say amen? My dear friends, have you ever wished you could start all over again? Hmm? To have all the past mistakes and errors and guilt, everything that you have done to be washed away. How can I start anew? Well, this is what God wants for you. That's the reason why God has instituted the ceremony called baptism. For baptism is a sign to show that we have joined Jesus, that we have been washed from all our sins, and we have entered Christ, and Christ has entered our lives. Can we say amen? Wow! That's what baptism is all about. It means it's a new start. It's a new beginning. You have been born again. You've been born again with Jesus as your Savior and Lord. The question right now is this. Many people are asking this. What does baptism really represent? What is the meaning behind baptism? In fact, Paul himself will explain what baptism is all about. It's amazing. Notice in baptism, we identify ourselves with three events. I'm going to ask this tomorrow. We identify ourselves with what? Three events in baptism. Three events that took place in the life of Jesus. Let's read in Romans chapter 6, 
In fact, Paul wrote, writes the book, wrote the book himself, Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized, there's no word, into Christ Jesus. You see that? We're baptized into, first what? Into his death. Therefore, we were what? Secondly, buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised, that's the third thing, from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Can we say amen? So in baptism, we identify ourselves with three events that took place in the lives of Jesus. What are they? His death. What are they? His burial. What are they? His resurrection. Wow. Remember Jesus. He died on that Friday afternoon while taking our sins upon his shoulder. Then he was buried in Joseph's Arithmathias tomb. And then on the third day, he resurrected from the dead. And guess what? When Jesus resurrected, he came out with a glorious body. He had left his, the sins of the world in the tomb. Are you listening? And that's what baptism represents. First, it represents death. In other words, somebody who's going to be baptized, literally, he's showing to the world that I'm dead. Dead to what? Well, I put it on the screen. Death to self and to our old sinful way of life. Are you listening? Oh, my dear friends, that's what it's all about. We've been speaking so much about self. We are born with this self-centered nature. We want to be the boss of the world. We want to have the first word and the final word all the time. We want to decide what we want to eat, what we want to look, what we want to listen to, wh where we want to go. Self is a little God and is the God of the human nature. When we meet Jesus, we understand that self is a dangerous God, is a false God. It's the image of the devil. And we want to surrender self to God and say to, to God, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. So somebody who's getting baptized, he's saying publicly, listen, I'm done with this life of selfishness. I, I want Jesus to become my God. I want the Holy Spirit to lead my life. I want him to have the final say in me. Can we say amen? I want to die to sin. In other words, just as Christ died, we too have been called to die if we want to die. But it's not a physical death. It's a spiritual death. Romans 6 verse 11, same chapter. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. But alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So it's not enough to just say, I'm going to die to sin. I'm going to stop smoking, drinking, committing adultery. I'm going to stop living in de facto relationship. I'm going to stop doing all those evil stuff, stuff, watching those porn movies. I cannot do that. That's not what Jesus would do before that computer. I want to give that all to Jesus, but it doesn't stop there. I want to start to live for my God, to live to glorify his name. Because that's why he's created me, to give glory to him, to serve him in holiness and in righteousness. Can we say amen? So just as Jesus died because of our sin, we too have been called to die to our past sinful life. In fact, it's death to self, sin, and the world as we surrender this to God or these to God. Second, burial. Jesus was also buried. What is burial here? Burial of our sins in the watery grave of baptism. So that is why, just like we have to bury somebody who's dead, same must be done with someone who's spiritually dead. You've got to bury that person in the watery grave or the baptismal pool, if you please. In fact, in fact, let me give you a shot for some who do not know. In Greek, the word baptism let me put it on the screen. Drink some water, please. The Greek word <clears throat> for baptism. Sorry, Dave. Um,
So the Greek word baptizo means to deep or immerse, to plunge underwater. Did you hear that? That's the Greek word. True baptism means you dip somebody underneath the water. For this reason, folks, you need plenty of water for biblical baptism to take place. Are you listening? Yeah, that's what the Bible says. It's not what the preacher says. Example, for example, let me share with you. There was a man who was studying the Bible. He was an Ethiopian and he was touched by the gospel. He wanted to be baptized and notice what happens. Notice the conversation here uh, as we read in Acts, the books of Acts chapter eight, verse 37. Then Philip said, in fact, you know, it's, it's a powerful story. You need to read it by yourself. He was reading the gospel in Isaiah, by the way, and he could not understand. And God in his mercy sent somebody to help him. Can we say amen? And Philip caught up with him in the chariot. Can we say amen? Some of you right now, some of you, you've been having problems with the Bible. Yeah. Some of you, you've told me, Pastor John, I never knew these things. Some of you, you were wrestling in the Bible and you could not understand. In his mercy, God has created this, this series for you to know him. Can we say amen? Same thing is happening to Philip. Go and read it for yourself. He's wrestling to understand what is going on in the text. And guess what? Boom, Philip comes. The Ethiopian was wrestling, pardon me. And Philip comes. And Philip said to him, if... It, now, now he, he was touched. When you study the Bible, he was touched and he wants to be baptized. Then Philip said to him, if you believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. Now notice this. And he, notice that. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. So this man, he was not a Christian before, but now he believes in Jesus. He says, I believe. Now notice what the Bible says. So he commanded, the Ethiopian commanded the chariot to stand still. And both, don't miss that. Both Philip and the eunuch, it's not only one person. It's not only the person who wants to be baptized, who goes and baptizes himself. There must be somebody that will baptize him. So both of them, they step into the water, went down into the water, and he, Philip, baptized him. Can we say amen? Some people, they have good intentions to be baptized, to give their lives to Jesus. They go by themselves. That's not biblical. You need to find a godly person who loves the Lord and loves the Bible and who's following the truth, who's keeping the commandments of God to baptize you. Can we say amen? You need to find a minister who's ordained, who's following God. And so Philip baptizes him into the water. Notice they both went into the water. And the Bible says now when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away and then he left. My dear friends, you need plenty of water for biblical baptism to take place. Why much, much water? Why? Because both the pastor will, will, will have to, because the pastor will have to dip you underneath the water. Because that's what baptism means. Baptizo means to immerse somebody. Can we say amen? But you will notice that the pastor will not keep you underwater for long because you'll die. You will literally physically die. You just picture that. He will just pull you up. The moment he puts you down underneath the water, he pulls you up within a fraction of a, a second. But the whole body must be put under the water. And you know what? This coming up out of the water symbolizes the new life in Christ. Can we say amen? So first of all, in my mind, I choose to die to sin and self. I surrender my sinful life to Jesus. And secondly, the pastor will bury me. You see that? Dip me underneath the water. And thirdly, pull me out. The pulling out is what? The resurrection to a new life in Christ. Can we say amen? All your sins and pride and anger have been buried into the watery grave. It's over now. It's the past. Amen. Oh, my dear friends, biblical baptism is truly like burying a dead person. I don't know if you've ever thought of that. Notice what happens. You must have seen somebody dead. What happens to the eyes of someone who is getting, who, who, who's dead, first of all? What happens? 
normally it's closed, right? Unless, I don't know if, if here in New Zealand or if you're Maori, if one eye is open or both eyes. No, I don't think so. Both eyes are closed, you're dead. If a nerve, for example, is still, still not there yet and you see it, no, no, both eyes are closed. Now, if somebody has been baptized by immersion, what happens to your eyes? For those who've been baptized by immersion, what happens? Normally you do what? You close your eyes, am I right? Just as if you're dead. Secondly, somebody who's dead, what happens to his breath or her breath? Cannot breathe. Same with somebody who's getting baptized deep under the water. What happens to your breath? Do you breathe under the water? You'll die. Mm. So it's, it's amazing of how Jesus would get the best symbol for baptism or for a new life in Christ, if you please. Can we say amen? Wow. So baptism represents death to sin. It's over now. In fact, in fact, one day there was a guy who was getting baptized and one of my colleagues, a pastor was baptizing him. And guess what? Please don't miss that. Everything went well until finally when it was time to dip the guy. Finally, the pastor was dipping him and the guy was going down the whole body, but only the hand, one hand, the right arm and hand was up. The pastor was trying to pull the arm and everything underneath the water. And the guy was struggling and keeping the, the, hand, the hand up, the right hand. <laughs> and there was a tug of war in the water. And finally, the pastor says, let, let go. You need to pull, pull every, everything must be washed. And the man says, please, pastor, you can wash everything, but keep this up. And the pastor says, what? He says, this, I've kept it for somebody to break his jaw. Somebody has hurt me, pastor. And then the pastor says, listen, my son, you're not ready for baptism. Baptism is to give all to Jesus. Can we say amen? It's, it's death. Here lies what? Self. Pride. Arrogance. Malice, adultery, envy. It is literally death to sin, to self. Can we say amen? And it is a new life in Christ. To love him, to serve him, and to love people, and to serve people, and to spread the gospel. Can we say amen? Today, unfortunately, we find different ways people are getting baptized. Some are getting baptized single. That's not biblical. You need to go in twos. At least somebody must baptize you. And some others are baptizing babies. Are you listening? They're sprinkling water on the, on the head. Is this biblical? That's not biblical. In fact, in fact, when somebody dies, what do you do to bury? Do you just take a little bit of soil and you throw on the head? Hmm? That's what you do? In fact, one day that's what a young man, a young boy taught his father because the father didn't believe in baptism baptism by immersion and so one day the dog died and they were resting all the time the father says you just sprinkle water sprinkle water and the other one says the son says you've got to bury that and finally they came to an agreement that baptism means you're dead to sin but the father says you sprinkle water that's it that's enough to deal with everything so finally you know what the young man did the young man decided to the father said to the young son son go and bury that dog and the young son, you know what he did? He just took some, some soil and he put on the head of the dog until the dog came. And when the father came, he was mad. He says, you didn't do what I told you to do, to bury this thing. And the son says, dad, you told me that a little bit of water is enough to deal with, to bury somebody. I've just put some, I've just thrown a little bit of soil. The father understood that day. The baptism, for baptism really to take place, to symbolize really death, that person must be deep. Unfortunately, today are going through sprinkling some water on the head. Some are baptizing through petals, rose petals. There's the, the leader that will throw some petals on that person. And wow, he declares him baptized. Lord have mercy. Some they baptize on the phone. Did you know that? The, the, the priest or the, 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 the leader, the church leader on the other line says, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism is a holy thing. It's God ordained. And God has ordained it to be done a certain way. 
so that it can represent death, burial, and resurrection. Can we say amen? Wow, that is why, according to the Bible, <clears throat> baptism by immersion is the only true way that faithfully represents these three things, death, burial, and resurrection. Now, some, I'm sure, is already thinking of getting baptized. Quite a few of you have already asked me, Pastor, please, when are you going to baptize me? Some are fighting. But the question is this, what are the requirements for baptism? You need to get this right before, you, before I baptize you. What are the three requirements? Well, let me give you three requirements. First of all, Mark 16, 16. Are you listening? Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. So first of all, you must believe in what? In the gospel message. In who? In Jesus Christ. You must believe in the Bible. Amen. In other words, you must be well this morning. Enough to understand that you are a sinner. People run. Okay, can we mute ourselves, please? We must be mature enough to understand that we are sinners and that the wages of sin is death. We must realize that, that we deserve to die, but that Jesus paid it all for me and that through him I can be saved. So we must believe in Jesus Christ. And his work, unfortunately, today thousands upon thousands of Christians have been baptized, inverted commas, without believing, without confessing that Jesus is Lord, without confessing their sins. Many have been baptized when they were babies. Wow. I ask you, can a baby believe? Yes or no? No. And yet here it says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. So you're asking, how come today many people are being baptized that way? By infusion or by sprinkling? Because it's not biblical. Let me tell you folks something. Baptizing infants is a pagan practice. You go on the internet, you will see that. In fact, Cardinal Gibbons, a Catholic priest, says this. For several centuries after the establishment of Christianity, baptism was usually conferred by immersion. So, so the church, the, the, the Roman church, they accept. It was done by immersion before. Okay, But since the 12th century, the practice of baptizing by infusion, by sprinkling, has prevailed in the Catholic church. So this is the Catholic saying, it, saying this. Huh? And notice why they, they, they do that. That's what they say. As this manner is attended with less inconvenience, that baptism, than baptism by immersion. The church exercises her discretion in adopting the most convenient mode according to the circumstances of time and place. And that's an error. They say that the church chooses to change it because of inconvenience. It's, it's harder to go and find a pool to baptize people. Unfortunately, such a method of baptizing people, my dear friends, do not reflect biblical baptism. Such a method do not deal with the problem of sin and the need to die to it. For this reason today, thousands of Christians are still living in sin, though they have been, inverted commas, baptized. It's a false baptism. So first of all, you must believe. Second, second condition, the people, let me share with you what is happening here. On Pentecostal day, many people had come to Jerusalem to feast, to celebrate the Passover feast. And guess what? The disciples had been filled with the Holy Spirit in the upper room. They had understood the gospel. Now why Jesus had to die before they could not understand. Now they understood. They understood. They saw him risen and they saw him caught up, being caught up in heaven. So they had a powerful message to preach. But guess what? They did not have the language to speak to these people. God gave them the gifts of tongues. So as they were preaching, these people could understand the message. And they heard the gospel. And finally, they were cut to the heart. And notice what they said, these people. Men and brethren, what shall we do? They were so touched by the message that Peter was preaching that day. Or probably some of you have been touched by those messages that you've heard night after night. And they're asking Peter. And maybe tonight you're asking me. What do I do now after I've heard all of these things? Notice what Peter said. 
repent and be baptized. There's the word baptized there. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Can we say amen? You must what? Repent. So first, you must believe in Jesus, in the word. Second, you must repent. What is the meaning of repentance? Repentance means to change the change of mind, the change of attitude. It's the change of heart. It is a U-turn that you do. When you acknowledge your sin and your sinful condition, and you confess them to Jesus, and you say, Jesus, I'm done with this lifestyle. I ask you to come in me, change me. May you put your spirit in me so that from that point in time, I will start to obey you. That's what repentance is all about. Can we say amen? First, believe. Second, repent. And third, notice this, the third one. <clears throat> Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Notice you baptize somebody really in the name of the triune God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We studied that. God is in three person. Briefly we studied. So for you to be baptized, notice it says go therefore and make disciples of the nations. You, we don't baptize members per se. We don't baptize a simple person just like that. You want to become a disciple. That's the doorway. Baptism is the doorway to discipleship. The moment you baptize, you become a disciple. And notice it says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And that's what discipleship is all about. That's what it means to become a disciple. Not only that you believe in the Bible, not only that you repent of your sin, not only that you get baptized, but after your baptism, you are willing to continue to learn of Jesus, to study the Bible more, to grow in grace. Remember when that guy found the treasure, what did he do? He went to sell everything to buy what? The field, which represents the word of God. And we saw that he went back to the word to learn more of Jesus and his teachings. And that's what discipleship is all about. That, that, that's why somebody who's baptized, it's not a one thing off and then I'm done. No, after I'm done, after I've been baptized, now I will join the body of believer so that I can learn more and more of who Jesus is so that I can please him more and more. Can we say amen? So the third thing is the call to become a disciple. In other words, a follower of Jesus. The crowd does not follow Jesus per se. They just pick and choose what they want to do in the Bible. They, they just pick and they just choose when they, when they want to go to church and then they go back into alcohol. Then they go back and forth, back and forth. That's not discipleship. You have to be willing to follow Jesus all the way and not halfway. Does that mean that you don't sin anymore when you get baptized? No. Even myself, sometimes I fall short. Lord, have mercy. It doesn't take a day for God to deal with the problem of sin in our lives. But what we're saying when we're baptized is that, man, I will follow Jesus no matter what. In good times and bad times, by his grace, I will walk with him. Whenever I'm weak, he will become my strength. If I fall, he'll pick me up. But we will finish that race. Can we say amen? It is your willingness to go all the way with Jesus in obedience to his word and to his commandments. Can we say amen? In other words, baptism is your total commitment to Jesus, inviting him not only in your heart as your savior, but as your Lord, as your master. Some people have been asking me, how important is baptism? Do I need to be baptized by water to be saved? How necessary it is for my salvation. Is, really, is it really necessary to be baptized? Let me tell you something. In the Bible, New Testament, you find 80 times the word baptism. What does that mean? It's very important. It is not a light issue. Secondly, notice in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to, to them, repent and be baptized. How many people? 
every one of you, every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remissions of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you want to be forgiven of your sins, you have to be baptized because baptism is your response to God's gift of salvation, to God's gift of forgiveness. God says, I will give you salvation freely. It's a free gift, but you must take it. You must take it, that gift. How do you take it? Well, the sign of taking in the gift of salvation is baptism. Can we say amen? And notice you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If we want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, baptism is the doorway. Can we say amen? Wow. Is it a salvation issue? Of course, that's what we're seeing. Notice here it says, whoever believes and is baptized will what? Be saved. Bible didn't say whoever believes alone will be saved. No, because even Satan believes. We see that in James, the book of James. So whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Of course, like I just said, it's not the water that saves you. It's your commitment to God that saves you. It's Christ that saves you, of course. But when you commit to Christ and his lordship, this is what saves you. But baptism is your biblical response to God's saving grace. Can we say amen? It is this outward sign to show that you have accepted Jesus and his saving grace in your life. So it is a sign of your commitment to the lordship of Christ, the sign of the new birth, the sign that you've surrendered your heart, your mind, your soul to Jesus. It's the sign that you're now a disciple of Christ. Can we say amen? That's why in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, it says, and all who have been united with Christ in what? In baptism, you see, this is what unites us with Christ, have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. Can we say amen? Covered with the righteousness of Jesus. And then, of course, notice it is a salvation issue. Jesus answered most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, which is baptism of water, and the spirit, which is the baptism of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So it's not only the baptism of the spirit, it's both. To enter God's kingdom, you must be baptized by water and by the spirit. Why? Because it is your commitment to Jesus. You must commit yourself. And committing yourself is done through dipping yourself into the water and coming up out of the water with Christ in your heart. Can we say amen? Wow, it's a new beginning with Jesus. And I want you to understand that, folks. It's not the end of your journey with Jesus. It's only your beginning. Some people, they say, Pastor, I want to be baptized, but I'm not perfect yet. Well, that's not what the Bible teaches. It will be perfect when the, the, the work of perfection will be completed when Jesus returns. So that is why the moment you receive Christ and you give your sin, your heart, your mind, your soul, and you receive Christ and you're filled with his spirit, that's the beginning. It's only the start. It's just like a baby. You know, a baby is born. You think a baby can, can walk on, on its two legs? Can a baby eat? So when we're born again, it doesn't mean that we become mature and we can do everything that a Christian should do. No, it's a growth process. And yet that baby, even though it cannot eat by itself, by herself, and walk, it's a perfect baby. Can we say amen? And it's the same when we're born again. It doesn't mean that we will not fall. In fact, when, when a baby falls, what do you do? What, do, what does parent, what do parents do? You beat up that baby and say, you're good for nothing. No, you pick up that baby. Oh, my little darling. You cannot do it now, but tomorrow you'll do it. And so the parents say, it's the same with us. Mistakes will be done after baptism. But the important thing is that you have Jesus in your life. Can we say amen? You have Christ and you can turn to him, confess your sins and seek for more grace so that you can become stronger than the other day, the next day. You're not perfect. At baptism, yet in character. But you're perfect in Christ. Can we say amen? Wow. Mistakes will be done. But it's only the beginning. That is why baptism is the symbol of marriage between me and Jesus. It's the same as when somebody gets married. Do you know how it is? Why do you get, when you love somebody, what do you do? 
You don't just go and take that person in the house and say, oh, that's my wife. No, 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 no. If you truly love that person, publicly you say, listen, I love and I commit myself to my wife. That's what you do. And it's the same with baptism. It's a public confession that you love and commit your life with Jesus. Can we say amen? It's the greatest thing that you could ever do on earth. Amen. Greatest thing to invite the king of the universe to come into your hearts and to dwell in you. So that from that point in time, through the power of the spirit of God, you can walk like Jesus walked. And talk like he talked. And start sharing your faith. By his grace, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Notice what happens at baptism. Remember, Jesus himself got baptized. Did he have to get baptized? No. He was giving us an example. When did he get baptized? As a baby? No. When he was adult. When he was mature in the heart. In the mind. You remember what happened that day when he got baptized? I want you to see that. There was a dove that was floating the moment he came up out of the water. A dove came. Then there was a voice that was screamed from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You know what, my dear friends? Each time when somebody gets baptized according to the Bible, he believes in God and the Bible, and the gospel, and he, he surrenders his life through repentance, and he chooses to follow Jesus as a disciple would do. This is what God says in the whole universe. That person is my beloved child. Can we say amen? That girl is mine. You see, the moment you do that, that's when you become a child of God. Because by nature, no one is a child of God. We're born a child of the flesh, the Bible says. Child of sin. It's only when we're born again that we become a child of God. All of us, we are on the right-hand side. Under, we're born under the rulership of Satan. We're slaves to sin, self, and the world. Alienated to God. But guess what? On the other side, there is God there. You see that? God's rulership. And how do we transfer ourselves? Boom! To here. The new birth. As we get baptized... We identify ourselves with God, and God universally, he claims you as his own. Can we say amen? Now you're a disciple. Now you're a child of God. Now you're on your way to heaven. Can we say amen? What does the dove that came on Jesus during his baptism represent? The Holy Spirit. Wow, that is why Paul says, uh, Peter said to the crowd, repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, my dear friends, the Holy Spirit is our greatest need right now. This is what brings the new life from above in us. This is what gives us victory over sin, over tobacco, over alcohol, over sexual immorality, over, over pride, over selfishness, over anger. We need the Holy Spirit. And that's the good news. When you get baptized, God will pour his spirit upon you. Some people, they say, Pastor, I don't want to be baptized because I'm afraid I will go back into my sins. Let me tell you something. If you repent, if you say, Jesus, take it all, come into me and dwell in me, Jesus will give you this power. Call the Holy Spirit so that you can walk as he walked, talk as he talked, that you can eat what he ate. That you can drink the right kind of drinks. Can we say amen? The Holy Spirit is the power that we all need. I tell you right now, this is the greatest privilege for all of us here tonight. To begin a new life in Christ. It's a change of kingdom. From the kingdom of darkness to God's marvelous kingdom. Have we all here been baptized? What are we waiting for? It's the greatest thing that can happen to you. Amen? Wow. For those who have not been baptized yet, God is calling you to do so. Don't wait for tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Can we say amen? Today God is calling you. Don't push for tomorrow. Tomorrow might never come. You know why? Because there is a devil who's seeking after you too. 
And he will try to push you to push your baptism for later. And later never comes. And I've seen that with many people all over the world. They say, yeah, pastor, I know I need to be baptized, but not now. And today, these people have become a worse sinner. Some have died without committing their lives to Jesus. How about you? Hmm? Some of you have been baptized before, but you've messed up. You've gone out of Christ. You've done the wrong things in the world. Maybe it's adultery. Maybe it's fornication. You know what you've done. And you've messed up everything. And you want to say, Pastor, please, uh, I need to recommit my life to Jesus. God is calling us tonight. Mm, those who've left Christ for the world. And some of you have learned new truths. Maybe you've been baptized by immersion, but you've learned some things you've never heard about before. And you're saying, maybe I should start a new life in Christ. This time to obey God. Before I've been baptized yet, but I was disobeying God. I was disobeying the commandments of God, disobeying the Sabbath truth. But now I understand, I need to make things right with God. God is saying to you right now, and now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Can we say amen? Don't you want to have your sins washed away tonight? Don't you want to have the gift of the Holy Spirit tonight? Don't you want to start a new life? No more addicted to tobacco to alcohol, to sexual immorality. You want to start a new life, to be filled with God's spirit, to start doing his will as you prepare for the coming of the rock. I was in India. Please give me a few more minutes. I know I've passed my time. I always aim to finish at 8.30, but you need to listen to that story. I was in India. A couple of some years ago, quite a, quite some years ago, and I was preaching there with ten other, nine other pastors. But in my group, God was doing something marvelous. I remember when I was preaching the first week, there was a young man who came. He was so touched by what I was preaching about Jesus and about the second coming of Christ. He literally asked my translator to translate it for me, and he said, "Can you please ask the pastor? Please give me two trucks." I need to go and tell all these people in the village to come and listen. They need to know Jesus. They need to be saved. They need to know that Jesus is coming soon. I said to him, I said to my translator, tell him we don't have money for two trucks. But we can give him money for one truck, but he can go two times in the village and bring people. And guess what? That's what he did. Check on the screen. That's the truck. Feeling with people. That's a young man who has heard about Jesus for only one week. Amen. Because you know, in India, they've got millions of gods there. But Jesus, Jesus is one of them, but Jesus, they don't even know this Jesus. But now that he's heard it, and now he's bringing two trucks full. One truck, two times. And you know what happened? After three weeks, we baptized both trucks of people. Boom. Finally, the whole group, we had over 6,000 people. 6,395 people getting baptized. Can we say amen? Wow. We baptized them. And sometimes there were no water. You know what we did? Look at that. We baptized people in barrels. And the pastor would be outside lifting the hands and baptizing the people one by one. Can we say amen? I ask you right now, is your heart right with God tonight? Mm? Or are you still having this old sinful heart, divided heart, one time in the church, one time in the world? Jesus is calling you right now to give all to him, to surrender all to him. Is this your desire? Mm? You say, man, pasta, later. No, you, you don't want to push. I'm going to make an appeal right now. And may the Holy Spirit touches you. I'm going to ask all of those who would love to be baptized. You just want to raise your hands. Put it on the screen, please, right now. You want to put it on the screen. I'm going to come out of the screen right now. And I want to see all those who wants to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to be baptized. I want to give my life to God. I want to start a new life with Jesus. 
Please put, put it on the screen. You know how to put it, huh? Um, can Lorna, Lorna, can you tell us how to, to put it? If, it, if, you go on the, if, you, if you go on the right corner, you will see those three dots. And there's raise hands icon. You want to put that there. Lilian, I know you've been asking for baptism. That's the time you put, you put it up now, dear. You know how to do it, Lilian? Just go on the right corner and corner. There are three dots on the right corner, top corner. And then there's a place where it says that it puts her hands up. Please take on that. All those who would love, you want, you want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. It's the bottom corner. Sorry, it's the bottom corner. Lilian, check it out. On the bottom corner, you click on those three dots. And then there's a, an icon, a hand icon. You click on it. I want to pray for you right now. I want to give, I want to ask Jesus to give all, that we can give our all to him. Don't be afraid. You're doing that for you and your salvation, and also your family will follow after as they see your example. Everyone who wants to put that little hand, some others have asked me, don't be afraid. Put it now, and we're going to pray for you. We're going to mention your name. God bless you, Dale. Praise God, my brother. God bless you, Steve. God bless your heart, Esther. That's the spirit of God upon you. God bless you, Rose. God bless you, Leanne. God bless you, Carl. Isn't that beautiful to see Christabel giving their lives? May the church pray right now for all these people. Lilian, have you put your little hand up, Lilian? Can you do that right now? Just put it up. If you cannot, just put your face up and put your hands up. Those who cannot put your hands up, you don't know how to put that little click. Just God bless your heart. Amen. Praise God. This is wonderful. Heaven is rejoicing tonight to see all of you deciding to follow Jesus. And we will pray for you that God will bless you, that we will go all the way with you. I see Mary from Australia raising the hands. Isn't that beautiful? Praise the Lord. I see Vivian raising the hands physically. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to pray for you right now. Is there another? Um, is Noah, are you there, my brother Noah? One of my right arm. Is Noah there? I would love Noah to pray with us tonight, to pray for these people, my brother. And then I will close with prayer if you don't mind. No, is that possible, my brother? Oh, yes. I was still uh, muting and muting. Thank you, my brother. So please let us close our eyes and let us let, let know our brother pray for us, and then I will conclude with a prayer. Go ahead, my brother. Oh, thank you. Our Father who art in heaven, uh, we thank you for giving us this privilege of coming to listen to your word. Uh, in today's life, sinning has become a way of living. Mm -hmm. We thank you for giving us uh, in our conscience that there is a need for us to repent and to mm -hmm. die into our sin and mm -hmm. be buried and mm -hmm. come up again with you as a resemble of your resurrection. At this particular part time, I also want to thank our pastor who is still standing up and saying the word as it is undiluted. And I also want to thank those who are standing up yes. to divorce the world mm -hmm. and they say they want to stand by you. Amen. May you help them to stand firm yes. for their decisions. Yes. And may you make them grow in their faith. Amen. And may we also be uplifted as they are standing up. Yes. For you. I pray, Lord, in your name, help them yes. until their baptism, mm -hmm. until to the end. In your name, I pray, God. Amen. Amen. 
Father, I agree with the prayer of my brother uh, Noah. Father, thank you so much for the work that you've been doing in the lives of these dear people. Um, they raise their hands because they love you. They've raised their hands because you've, you're doing something in their hearts, Lord. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit opening, who has been opening night after night to make them see Jesus and to understand his truths and to see their sins also, to acknowledge their sins, that, that they cannot continue to live like that, as our brother Noah said in his prayer, that they, they, they want to stand up for Christ now, for the truth. Please bless each one of them. Even from now on, wash away their sins. Prepare them for the coming baptism, Lord, that will, coming baptisms in the near future that we will have. Oh God, we thank you so much for the miracles that are happening tonight on this Zoom, Lord. Satan didn't want us to do this campaign, but we thank you, Lord, that your people have decided to go ahead on Zoom. And today we see the results. And we pray that there will be more people joining this group to give their lives to Jesus, to change kingdoms from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. God, prepare all of them. Bless all of them. Bless the family they represent so that the whole family will eventually be saved when Jesus comes. Oh God, thank you for the work of your spirit tonight. Bless each one as we go our separate ways. Forgive us of our sins and help us to come again tomorrow night to learn more of you, more of Jesus, to be set free by more of these truths so that whenever it's ready, we will all go those who have raised their hands into the water to be baptized. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, my dear friends. We would love to have your names, your phone numbers. We would love to contact you to make sure that we prepare you so that when you step into the water, it will be the wedding of your life. You will marry Jesus for good and you will come up out of the water to follow him all the, all the way until Jesus returns. Thank you for the extra minutes you've given to me tonight. It was such an important message. Tomorrow night is the night you don't want to miss. Um, um, Lorna, what's the title for tomorrow night, my dear? I didn't write it down with me. What is the title? Check the title before we let you go. Uh, because to, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's what happens when you die, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right? Um, almost, Pastor. It's actually how to prevent dying early, postponing your funeral, the health measures. Postponing your funeral. Oh, it's postponing your funeral tomorrow. Praise God. Folks, we want to postpone our funerals. Tomorrow night is the night. Please don't miss that. And I beg of you in Jesus' name, keep inviting people to come. They need to hear these truths. They need to prepare themselves for heaven. They need to be baptized too. God bless you. Have a good night.